Look after yourselves. Good to see you, brother. Take care. Talk soon. Bye, dog. <laughs> I'm on my way to Vegas, and I'm gonna get there just in time to get my flight. Thank you, Darren. Have a good one. So I'm in the lift, and they've got a button that says earthquake mode. I would really not want to be in here pressing that button. So I'm at LAX, I've got about an hour and a half to my flight, I've got coffee, I've got Wi-Fi, sorted. There you go, enjoy your flight. On our way to Las Vegas, thank you for choosing to fly United today, we're happy to have you on board. So I've just landed in Vegas, let's see if the luggage has arrived. So entertainment tonight, you can go and see Donny Osmond, or you can go and see Rod Stewart. So it's the day before the show, I'm at the Las Vegas Convention Center and Black Magic Design signage is everywhere. They are absolutely dominating the outside of this building. So just in case you missed it, DaVinci Resolve 18's out. So Resolve 18 is everywhere, look at this. What's up Dan, how you doing? Welcome to NAB, we're happy to see you. I finally understand, I found my old mate Simon Westland. European marketing director, how are you sir? I'm good, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. 12K camera, 6K Pro camera, all the new ATEM advanced panels, the ATEM mini products, they've never been seen in the wild. So, it, you know, people to come in and touch things and talk to us, I think it's going to be a great week. Yeah, cool. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Thank you, mate. Really great to see, to see you again. Thank you. So, look who I've bumped into. Oh, hi. The Hello, one Internet. and only Casey Ferris. Who'd have guessed it? Ah, uh, I, I don't know. It's, uh, it's a wild world. It's a small world. <laughs> like, it's so cool that there, there's so many awesome people here. Yeah. And we've got the one and only Alexis Van Herkman hey. in the house. How are you doing, mate? I'm good, I'm good. How are you doing? It's been a while since I've seen you. But you came to my studio, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I reckon it was five years ago. A little bit more. Maybe. A little bit more. Time passes fast. So you're at Frame I.O. Uh, I'm at Frame I.O., which means I'm now at Adobe. Oh, yes, of course. Yes. How's that going? Swimming. Good. Alexis Van Herkman. We've got Joey Diana in the house as well, demoing away down here. Across the board? Yeah. I love this guy. Thank you. Good to meet you. Thank you. Crazy days. Right, so I finally managed to nail down one of the Blackmagic guys. I'm gonna interrogate him now about Resolve 18. Uh, it's a good friend of mine, Craig Hefferden. And good to see you again, Craig. And you, Darren. It's been quite a while. Um, yeah, too long. So I'm just gonna ask him some key questions, but more importantly, I've actually managed to get hold of one of these. So this is, that feels super solid. Nice. Uh, it's, yeah, yeah. That's well pretty, made, aren't they? That's heavier than I thought it was going to be, actually. Oh, it's full of data. They get heavier when they're full. <laughs> so, okay. So on that, so it's called it's called the cloud storage. Okay. Right. So I got a little bit confused to start with the word cloud. So it, it's storage, isn't it? Yeah. It, yeah. So it's a physical thing, but it's yeah. the way that it's leveraged. The this cloud this isn't the cloud. This is. <laughs> yeah. It sits at the back end of a number of technologies and advancements that we put into Resolve 18. Yeah. That utilize cloud. Right. So you'll know from the work that we've put through for previous versions of Resolve, the collaborative tool sets have always been very strong, all the way back to remote grading that we introduced yeah, yeah, many, yeah. many years ago. The demand now and ever growing in the industry is for people that aren't facility based to be quickly and neatly integrated into projects. So Resolve 18 brings forward a lot of technology, a lot of ideas that we had. Of how do we share libraries? How do we create creative tools using cloud technologies where projects can be shared, but we can see real-time work. I could be in Manchester, yep. you could be on the South Coast, yep. and I can see you working on my project as you work through. Yep. So I could be editing, and you can be grading, and I'm only one step ahead of you. Yep. So this whole database thing has been completely rewritten, as far as I understand. Um, Effectively, yeah, yeah. And, and also massively simplified in terms of how does it set up and work. Yep. So what you have now inside of Resolve 18 when you set up a project is an option to host that library online in the Blackmagic Cloud services. So you go to Blackmagic Cloud website, yep. you can set up your account, please everybody log in and try it, and all you need is your ID. So if you created a, a cloud library, you just need my ID, you can add me as a user to your to your library, and then you're sharing your project. Okay, so if I, so if I want to share with you, if it's my project, my library, if we're calling it, yeah. and I want to share with you, I need an ID, I, is that ID what, an email address? Or just an email address, so, yeah. So you don't have to register as a Blackmagic cloud user? I would need an account. Again, I can just go in, I okay. can use my email address. So for my clients, I'd have to set up my client account. 
So I could set that up for them and email it to them? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then you just add them in as users um, and it automates. What you'll find is that there's a cost to host the library. It's not subscription based, so it isn't yeah. an annuality. Um, what you'll do is you'll pay $5 per library per month. Yep. The moment you don't need that library, project's finished, everything is done, you can shut that down, yeah, right. you start paying that $5. And that library can be as big as I want? In, in, uh, in oh, practice. Uh, obviously, I'm not talking about media, because if I'm right, the media that's in that cloud, that's not the Blackmagic $5 bit, that's the project, isn't it? That's the project. So yeah. there's two layers. Yeah. So the hosting of a library for you to share your content and determine which users can see which projects is the Blackmagic Cloud. Yep. And then what we then have, and this is where the storage products become part of, a, of an option basically, because you can use your own storage, you can use your local storage. These are more a device that we built that are optimized for fast network storage yep. with Global Sync. Yep. So there's scale there. What you'll do with a set of new tools inside of DaVinci Resolve 18 is we utilize Dropbox to be a network partner yeah. where you can identify local files, share them through Dropbox to your nominated users, and then point to point send yeah, okay. media and sync. So just to clarify for everyone, the, the $5 cloud subscription is to get your projects up there, yeah. uh, allow you, you to collaborate with other people, yeah. but it's not your storage, it's not your... It is. No, you don't pay $5 for 10 terabytes of storage, it's just to do the cloud collaboration. Okay, great. So there's lots of new features in Resolve 18, apart from sort of hardware and the cloud thing, and the proxy thing, which are, yeah. I think is awesome. But the some of those new open effects are, you're getting very um, AI focused, they're pretty smart things, aren't they? Yeah, so technology where we're leveraging how Resolve can create efficiencies and speed in the objects or the decisions you're making, particularly in the color page. Um, you'll have seen as we've gone through various updates through Resolve 17, we were building in support for things like the Apple M1 chips, yep. which with inside their technologies have a lot of neural processing and AI processing. So we're using the power of that. And then within the software, we're also adding tools that, that act and behave in a way that give you, you know, the speeds of doing it. Um, if you look at the magic mask, so previously it was for people and faces, so you could very quickly mask off if you were doing beauty shots. An extension of that now is the object mask, yep. which you can look at a particular shot and then choose objects to either remove or to work on inside the shot. And the AI tools and what we built into the Resolve Neural Engine will pretty much identify any object yeah, in the okay. frame and then tweak that for you. So you're not leaving out people who haven't got an M1 Max though, are you? No, they, 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 they're probably faster optimized on the M1 maps than they were previously. Yeah, okay. Um, but it isn't an Apple only. Because I was trying to get one. I've been waiting months and months. I actually canceled my order in it. It's like it's just gone crazy. But I've got an, I'm now running on a, um, a Zeus Pro Art with the NVIDIA okay. uh, thing, and that's that's flying. So I'm looking forward to seeing how quick yeah. this AI stuff works on that as well. Absolutely. No, and it should. And again, it's the speed that the tool gives you rather than Windows or masks. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. You, know, well, you know better than me. And this is the Blackmagic Cloud Store. This is the 20 terabyte version. It also comes in an 80 terabyte and a 320 terabyte version. And it's using M.2 drive. So this is super fast. This is faster than SSDs. And on the back, can it show, oh, you've got really good cooling on the top there because those M.2 drives get really hot. On the back, you've got four 10 gigabit ethernet sockets. So this is allowing you to connect to the cloud because uh, obviously this is not a cloud, this is storage. So that's how you get to the cloud. And then you've also got a one gigabit ethernet port as well on there. You've also, oh, sorry, you've got two uh, one gigabit ethernet ports on there. You've also got USB-C connections. So if you want to attach external drives in addition to the storage that you've got here, you can do so. And there's also a monitor out on here. So this actually has got a bit of software inside it. The monitor out goes straight to a HDMI in on a monitor and you can monitor the performance of the ports and how much storage you've actually used inside. So this is, this is a great bit of kit. This is gonna be super fast. So this one is the Blackmagic Cloud Store Mini. So this is eight terabytes of M.2 drive. So again, super fast, but it's a little bit smaller form factor. This will sit on your desktop and you've got eight terabytes of storage in there. You've still got your 10 gig ethernet and your one gigabit ethernet to get up to the cloud. So if you're using the Blackmagic Cloud service, this is how you're gonna get there. USB socket if you want to attach external storage into it as well. So you, you're going beyond the eight terabytes. And then you've got a HDMI monitor out there so you can actually monitor the performance of the box. So you'll see the data transfer speeds and how much of the eight terabytes you've used. So this is, I think this one's gonna be very popular.
and this is the Blackmagic Cloud Pod. So this is just an interface only. There's no hard drives in here at all, but it's allowing you via 10 gig E to connect to the internet and upload your footage to the Blackmagic Cloud. You've also got the HDMI monitoring on there so you can see what's going on with your data transfer and two USB sockets so you can actually attach external storage to it to, so this becomes a portal to get to the Blackmagic Cloud. So there's pretty much something for everyone. So this is the Blackmagic Cloud Store interface that connects HDMI straight out of the box. So what we've got here is it's showing us the data transfer on the second port on there. And what we're looking at up there is the amount of storage we've got left. You're looking at storage capacity, you're looking at the health of the device oh, yeah. in terms of cell, and you're looking at user activity. You have a YouTube channel, right? I do have a YouTube channel. Thank you, sir. So I've just stumbled across this little secret. It's called Presentations. This is coming to version 18 very soon, I believe. It's not in there just yet, but this is brilliant. This is allowing my clients to review the edit, but via the cloud. So basically, I've got this as a library in the cloud, but they don't need to know how to use Resolve. They're not going to see my timeline. This just seamlessly plays my timeline to them. They can make notes and comments on there quite easily. Sorry, presentation just started over there. It's a bit noisy. And those comments and markers come back into my timeline. So just to summarize, I don't have to render out my timeline and upload it to the cloud first. They literally just open presentations, play my timeline, and it comes through. But they're not seeing all the little individual edits. They're just playing a really nice playback of a full screen image of my edit. So I hope that makes sense, but it's going to be really good. What's it called again? Blackmagic Remote Monitor. DaVinci Remote Monitor. DaVinci Remote Monitor. That's it. I'm never going to remember. DaVinci Remote Monitor. Right. So there's also a new app out called DaVinci Remote Monitoring. This is a clever bit of tech. What this is allowing us to do is true remote grading. So the client, if they have a, a proper grading monitor, they also need a studio license and something like an Extreme or an Ultra Studio. So both ends need the hardware, but it allows us to send from one station to another station remotely a true video signal through this app. Now you can control the bitrate, you can control the codec, and as long as you've both got uh, an extreme or an ultra studio at either end, you're going to see a true feed. So this is brilliant for remote grading feeds. Only thing with it at the moment is it's a Windows or Linux system only because it's relying on an NVIDIA graphics card. So, but the client can be running on a Mac without an NVIDIA graphics card. But to send, you must be on an NVIDIA graphics card. So this is really exciting, DaVinci Remote Monitoring. It's 10 to 4 on the first day, and I've not even started editing yet. I'm going to draw one big stroke. Now what we found is that one stroke kind of across the whole object usually does a really good job. And if you're adding or removing strokes, you want to do all of those to where you're happy with it before you do the track. Right, so we're on the Azu stand, and they've got the first time showing of an RGB OLED, 32 inches or 31 and a half inches to be precise. But it's also got built-in hardware calibration. So I'm quite excited to get a look at that in a bit. Darren, yes, this is our brand new PA32DC monitor. It's the world first OLED display. It's 4K display. It's also exclusive Asus feature is a uh, built-in color um, calibration hardware and with the flip um, motor calibration that be able to automatically calibrate the monitor. Okay. As you can see- So you're not going to need the i1 cal thing or anything like that? Yes. Just, it's built into the system? Yes. It also supports a lot of uh, color gamut. As you can see here in the application, you can change the standard sRGB, REC 2020, also Adobe RGB. Um, so price and when can we get it? So this one will launch around um, July timeframe. So the price we're looking at around uh, 5,000 USD. Yep. Yeah, it's not set yet, but that's around the Okay. We've got Jeff Greenberg in the house from the ICA. A lot of you might know him. I've seen him on loads of, when we did those 24-hour live things at the mixers. We did that. a 24-hour live mixer last year. You also might see me on LinkedIn Learning, post-production world. Uh, you know, color is near and dear to my heart. All right, come so down, it's, it's my channel. It's your channel, that's all right. <laughs> you know something, I'm jealous. I wish I taught Resolve on screen as well as you do. Stop. In person, I'm good. Start is a word. Problem is I learned too much from you. I'd end up stealing your stick and it's good. Your teaching is good. Cheers. And it's great to see you in person. Likewise. So I'm with Bram, you all know Bram, CEO of Flanders. How's it going? Good, good, yeah, yeah? thank you. Yeah. What have you got for us? Well, so the main thing we're gonna be showing is the DM220. Uh, the 220 is a 22 inch RGB OLED monitor. Okay. Uh, and what we're trying to do with this is kind of target a, a kind of left out part of the market, which is that 
um, sub ten thousand uh, dollar OLED monitoring, especially for production environments, but also uh, potentially for smaller edit and color correction suites. So, uh, okay. haven't announced an exact price. Probably be in the ballpark of sixty five hundred dollars though, um, and coming a little bit later this year. So. That one could be quite exciting for a lot of people. A good alternative to some of the twelve, fourteen, twenty thousand dollar OLEDs yeah. on the market. Okay. Um, and then. Um, so yeah. what, what OLED technology is it? So it's actually an RGB OLED. So yep. it's an emissive RGB OLED. It's purely additive, so very linear response. Um, so it's going to be, um, you know, again for people who want very high contrast, more of an SDR monitor for sure. Yeah, yeah. We do have some HDR uh, monitors coming quite soon. There's going to be the XM312U, which will be a 5,000 nit uh, HDR monitor. Uh, we also have a couple of new large OLEDs coming, so refreshes of our XM551U and uh, 651U. Yeah. We'll be doing the uh, 552U and the 652U, which are essentially the same products as before, but using a newer generation of those W OLED panels that have improved stability um, over time. So you're going to get less drift on those panels and, and uh, a, um, a little bit better performance overall. So, okay. Yeah. okay. So is this is this it got SDI connection? What's the connectivity? Yeah, so this is all going to be three gigabit a second SDI. Yep. Any of the XM series will have twelve gigabit twelve gigabit a second SDI. You can run quad three G. You can run double six. You can run a single twelve G. On these, we're going to max out at twelve G because it's HD resolution anyway. Yeah. Or sorry, three G because it's HD resolution anyway. Um, so, but they'll all support 444, 12 bit signals, all of that through them. So. Okay. So can this do P three? Yes. So you have a P three selection. Uh, it'll do about ninety nine point. You know, something percent of P3. Okay. It'll do all of Rec 709. Uh, it has a Rec 2020 mode as well. It won't do all of Rec 2020, of course, but it does have a Rec 2020 emulation mode built in. Yeah. Um, and all of these products are also compatible with um, all of our calibration solutions. So AutoCal, which is a closed loop calibration system, Color Space, CalMan, whatever you want, uh, these displays will work with that. Okay. What's the timeline looking like for your flagship series? So the XM312U, we're waiting on some parts to come inbound actually to our factory before we can get those uh, fixed, um, or not fixed, but uh, <laughs> yeah, get them uh, built. I do think probably in the next month or two we'll start seeing those come out. And then products like this, we don't have an exact timetable, but certainly be this year. The one thing that we do have a, a pretty exact timetable on is the new 55 and 65 inch OLEDs. Those will actually probably start shipping uh, in late May, so okay. uh, we're getting quite close on those. All right. so. so I think everyone's getting very excited about these. Yeah, and <laughs> I mean, manufacturing's not easy right now, that's for sure. We all love your products, you yeah, know that. I appreciate it. Good to see you again. Yeah, thanks, man. All right, yeah, take care. Thanks, appreciate your time. I, ju I just met him here, walking by. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> see you on the YouTube channel. Subscribe to, Subscribe to this guy. He's a hero. He, he's the one who deserves that. Chadwick. Yeah. It's great to see you too. Enjoying the show? I'm enjoying it, yeah. Cool. Checking out some monitors over here in Sony. I see you checking out some $30,000 monitors. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So the channel must be doing well. <laughs> so look who I've bumped into, Mr. The Lentic. Yeah, hello. Oh, hey, it's been a long time I've been telling people. It's a long time since I've seen anyone. I know, I know, I know. The line is like, oh, we see each other in person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very good, very good. So how's the color lab going? Actually, we just released version 2 and um, it supports now Premiere and Final Cut and I just gave a talk actually for Final Cut people and um, lots of new like uh, interesting features, better AI, better matching, you know, faster, you know, everything's just uh, developing so good in the AI world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're moving quick enough. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. good. So, you know, so it's good and no, I'm really, really happy for that. Awesome. Mary Plummer, the goddess of Fairlight. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so um, I know there's lots of exciting new things, so you need to check out the Blackmagic website. Are you doing any new things on the website? Um, we've got some training up there and we always try to keep it up to date with the latest versions and information, so just cool. check it out. It's under the help menu. You can go right to our training page. Cool. So Mary does those, you couldn't be in any finer hands. All right. Well, it was good to see you again. Hey. Great. Nice to see you. Oh, it's off? And then I'll just add patch replacer, just do a little bit of beauty work. We've got proper colors geek out of here in here. Check this lot out. Hey guys. Right, should be editing, but I'm on my way to the film light party. Get on with it. <laughs>